one of these trees is the sun. And you can see that the tree, the, the smaller tree, the younger tree has grown in the shadow of the great tree. Hey guys, I'm Harmony Klingenmeyer and welcome to Hope Arises. I am so excited to be with you today because I have such a special guest here in my office with us today, um, Audrey Frabel is a very dear friend of mine. She is a licensed minister with Grace International. She is a powerful prophetic voice in our generation and a minister at my home church, uh, Garden Valley Church in Roseburg. So we are coming to you today specifically because God is releasing a word for the body of Christ. And the Lord has been downloading some really specific revelation to Audrey, and she just shared on it actually in an apostolic class here at our church. And as I was listening to her speak, I was, I just felt the Holy Spirit moving in my heart, saying that this is a message that we need to bring to the Hope Arises family. Mm -hmm. I know um, I, we're speaking to people across the nation, and that there are even people who listen um, to this show in other nations, and we believe that what God is speaking is for the entire body of Christ. And if we can catch what Holy Spirit is speaking, he's really wooing us into an encounter with him in this time. If we will steward it, it will become, it will manifest in the greater body of Christ. And this is a really a word to leaders, I feel. Um, and you may not think of yourself as a leader. However, <laughs> if you are a lover of Jesus, you are a leader. You're called to lead in your spheres of influence. You're called to steward your own heart, your marriages and families, your workplaces. You're called to bring the gospel to your workplaces. And so this word is for you. And it also might be an opportunity to really recognize that you are a leader and that God is calling you to a higher place. And so we're going to be discussing the holiness of God today. And so I just want to turn it over to Audrey for a minute. Audrey, I'd love for you to share just um, your, if you've had an encounter with God in the encounter, what did you experience and what was God speaking to your heart about his holiness? Mm. Yes. Um, well, it was a few months ago heading into 2022. And as I began to pray, I always like to pray at the end of the year and just seek God on the upcoming year. What does he have for us? And I just kept hearing him say holiness, 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 and, mm -hmm. and the call to holiness. Mm -hmm. And um, first Peter gives us a call to holiness mm -hmm. and uh, reminds us that the Lord said to be holy because I am holy. Mm -hmm. We have been made holy by his holiness. We are holy. So you know, it's not something that we do. It's some, it's something that we are. We are holy by his yes. holiness. Mm -hmm. And so I guess as I've been studying that, I, I definitely have been encountering him and his holiness in mm -hmm. a very new, deeper way. Mm -hmm. um, what were those verses in First Peter? First Peter, Peter 1, 13. So I'll just read it here so you guys can join us um, if you have your Bibles. In First Peter 1, it says, so think clearly and exercise self-control. I mean, that might be a good place to start. You know, I think a lot of the times the enemy operates in our lives through confusion. Mm -hmm. And when we're confused, it's very challenging to hear God's voice. So right now, I just speak over yeah. you freedom from confusion yes. and over us and over the body of Christ. In this season, we are going to hear God with clarity. Yes. And we're going to exercise self-control. Amen. Look forward to the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. Well, there's a lot in that verse. I'm mm -hmm. going to have to go back and look at that more. And you guys can too. <laughs> so you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You don't know, you didn't know any better then, but now you must be holy in everything you do. Just as God who chose you is holy. For the scripture says, you must be holy because I am holy. Mm -hmm. Wow. And the first thing that really sticks out to me is what does the word holiness mean? And you can go into, into depth in this, but I really feel like it's other. Mm -hmm. It's different. Yes. Uncommon, set apart, 
um, consecrated to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so we shouldn't be, you know, I thought a lot about the pandemic and, you know, this is a globe, this might go out globally. So depending upon where you're at, it may look differently, the response to the pandemic. But I thought about how people are responding to the pandemic and how as believers, as sons and daughters of God, we should look differently in our response. We shouldn't be fearful and we shouldn't be maybe freaking out or, you know, even going to, I was thinking about the scripture of don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. I think that some, you know, out of fear and anxiety, stress, with the unknowns and everything that has taken place, even maybe still taking place, people are slipping back mm -hmm. and going to old loves mm -hmm. because of those desires and those things. And, um, mm -hmm. wow, that's powerful. That really, that speaks directly to something that the Lord, um, had me release last week on, oh. on hope arises. We were talking about Hosea chapter two mm -hmm. and how the, the wife of God, who was, he, the picture was mm -hmm. Israel as the wife of the father mm -hmm. had run after her other lovers uh -huh. and had seen her other lovers as the source of her new wine and her grain and her cloth yes. and her covering. Yes. Um, she began to, she was receiving blessing. Mm -hmm. She was being blessed, but she didn't discern who the blessing came from. Mm -hmm. And she began to give credit to the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And I think this is really important. God is separating us. God is holy. And he separates us from some things. Yes. He's separating us from our lovers. Yes. But he's also separating us to someone. Yeah. To his heart. Yeah, to himself. Yes. Um, and also in response to that, I love that book. There's also, you know, such a dance and a tension. But at the end, the difference is, the shift is that she surrenders and fully trusts. You can see how she didn't trust. There was this like back and forth where she kind of did, but kind of didn't. You know, she'd open up her heart a little bit, then she'd close it back off. But the end, what I see is a bride that is fully trusting, mm -hmm. trusting and confident in her groom. Yes. And that's actually what God says in the second half. So the, the chapter that just wrecks me is chapter two of mm -hmm. Hosea, mm -hmm. where the first half is this absolute judgment. God, it's almost like you see a picture of God dragging the unfaithful wife before a judge and kind of tossing her down and saying, look what she did. Yeah. You know, look at, look at her unrighteousness. Look at how her, she's uncovered mm -hmm. and look at how she forgot me. Mm -hmm. And actually the, the chapter has a really strong break right in the middle. And the last thing that God says in his judgment piece is she forgot me. Wow. And then immediately after that, and this is what just, it wrecks me. God says, therefore, and that word means because of. Wow. So because of everything I just said about her, that she's wicked, that she's unfaithful, that she loves her lovers more than me and she gives them credit and she cares more about them than she does about me. And because she forgot me, because of all that, I'm going to woo her. Wow. Into the wilderness. Wow. And he, he actually identifies mm -hmm. the real problem. Mm -hmm. And the real problem isn't, and this is the crazy thing. He just lays out all of her sin, right? But the real problem wasn't her sin. The real problem was her perception of God. Yes. Yes. She's, he says, I'm going to teach her yeah. to call me husband instead of master. Mm. The real issue is that. Mm -hmm. We don't understand ah, yeah. that he's our lover. Yes. That he's a husband, not mm -hmm. a slave man, mm -hmm. not, not a slave driver, not mm -hmm. a slave owner. Mm -hmm. And he's not interested in slaves. Mm -hmm. He wants a heart to heart connection. Yes. And you talked about yes. that. Yes, I did talk about that connection um, in relation to our holiness. It's everything. So if we want to be, you know, walking in our holiness and not maybe such a, a back and forth or an up and down where, well, I kind of felt holy today, but not really, you know, I lost my holiness the next day or whatever that looks like. We want a, a holy consecrated walk and a firm walk in his Holy Spirit, partnering with his Holy Spirit. It comes from our connection with him. Mm -hmm. You know, similar, I had gave the comparison to our connection with our children. If you're a parent, 
how many of you know if your connection isn't so great with your son or your daughter, you don't have much uh, influence with them. But if you have been wow. fueling that connection with your child, mm -hmm. you you have that much more influence with them. So when you go to speak to them, it's going to soak in. But mm -hmm. if you're distant and there is not a very good connection, I have found that my kids are not going to listen and they're not going to hear my words. Wow. So. Isn't, isn't it powerful then? To really walk in Holy Spirit, we have to recognize how how hard God works at his connection with us. Yeah, totally. And receive it. Yeah. I think, you know, we want it, We think we've got to work at it, but we don't. All we really have to do is just pause, listen, and receive. And he's here. He's right here with us. Mm -hmm. He's always with us. He's, mm -hmm. His spirit lives inside of us. Mm -hmm. Yes. And yes. so I've caught even more of that in my studies of the topic of holiness like wow you mm -hmm. really you're you're everywhere you're with me you're yes. and you know he he's closer than the hair on, on my head he's closer mm -hmm. than the skin on my body mm -hmm. he's closer than the skin on your body mm -hmm. he's closer yes. than the hair on your head he's he's mm -hmm. speaking to you right now right where you're at mm -hmm. and yes. he loves you he yes. loves you he's crazy about you yeah that's exactly right holiness is not like audrey says it's not a list of to do's or a list of to don'ts. Mm -hmm. It's not about what you do. It's about who you are. You are holy because God has made you holy. And and the interesting thing is we know that God, in, he inhabits holy places. Mm -hmm. Like when Solomon created mm -hmm. the temple, he mm -hmm. built the temple. And he consecrated, every single step was consecrated with the blood. Mm -hmm. We have to understand that we have been fully consecrated by yes. blood. Yeah, yes. I've been thinking about that as well. It's amazing. And the, yeah, the more you soak on that truth and get into the word of God, you go, wow, what am I doing with what God has given to me? And why am I even wrestling with A, B, or C? Mm -hmm. Because I have the power of his spirit living inside of me. Mm -hmm. yes. And how am I? And then the, the, the question for me comes, how am I stewarding his holiness? Mm -hmm. And so as I've been walking this out, everything around me, even in the natural, because oftentimes the natural will mirror the spiritual, I want to take better care of. Mm. So literally mm. I found myself just deep cleaning a mm. lot of different areas in my house and wanting, mm. you know, just to clean. Mm. Well, and I think it's really, as you understand who you are, mm -hmm. the exterior begins to reflect what we believe, yeah. first about God, mm -hmm. you know, our relationships too. Mm -hmm. Our relationships actually don't reflect what we believe about other people. This might be kind of revelation to some people. Your relationships actually reflect what you believe about God. Mm -hmm. I feel personally convicted by those words. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, I feel convicted. I feel God circumcising my heart right now. When we struggle receiving love from others, what we're really saying is, I can't receive love from my Papa God. And that is what he wants to heal first. And as we begin to acknowledge, recognize, and walk in holiness mm -hmm. as an identity. Mm -hmm. Yes. We are holy. Yes. As we begin to believe that, meditate yeah. upon it. Yes. Then holiness becomes part of the exterior as well. Yes. Like Audrey is saying, like, you know, she wanted to deep clean her house or maybe there's, maybe there's a spot in your house. I can, I'm thinking of one in my house right now. <laughs> um, my walk-in closet, <laughs> right. that's a complete disaster. Right. <laughs> and I'm thinking, man, what does that reveal about maybe a compartment of my heart? Mm -hmm. God wants to reach in yes. to those compartments and make them holy. Yes. Not because I do it, Yes. But because he already did the work. Yes. And we can partner with him. So mm -hmm. in co-laboring, mm -hmm. there is also scripture about us purifying our heart. I think Paul mm -hmm. spoke to one of the churches about us calling us to purify our hearts. Yeah. And so we are the stewards of our own hearts mm -hmm. and everything, our whole life flows out of our hearts, right? Yes. So, um, yeah, I think, yeah. It's, I think it's actually James. It keeps going over and over my head. Cleanse your hearts and mm -hmm. cleanse your hearts. And I really feel the Lord is saying it's not through like we can go and wash our hands. And I know both Audrey and I have seen the movie 
Redeeming Love. It was mm -hmm. a very powerful mm -hmm. movie. Um, I do not recommend it for people, you know, who struggle with maybe lust or pornography. Um, it is, there's some kind of uh, heavier, scene, parts. heavier parts yeah. um, that deal with physical intimacy between a husband and wife, uh, which is beautiful, but not for everybody's eyes. So I just want to say that. But it's an incredibly powerful story about a woman who is the prostitute in the book of Hosea mm -hmm. and the man who God uses to redeem her life mm -hmm. as a picture of Christ. Yeah. And in one of the scenes, she begins to scrub herself yeah. with stones. Mm -hmm. She's in the river and mm -hmm. she, she recognized, mm -hmm. see, and this is, yeah. this is what is so powerful. Yeah. She saw what real love is mm -hmm. by looking into the eyes of the man she betrayed, mm. who took her back over and over again. And when she mm. saw how her choice to betray him mm -hmm. broke his heart, yes. and he still chose to love her, yeah. she immediately recognized her uncleanness. Yes. And and yet, <laughs> and this is what she didn't understand, but Papa God wanted to reveal to her, it wasn't an exterior uncleanness. It was the uncleanness mm -hmm. of a heart. Yeah. That was carrying the orphan spirit. Yes. That had never been properly loved by a father. Mm -hmm. And that is what God was going after. Yes. He was going after her heart. Yeah. And you can't clean the outside first. It starts with on the inside. Mm -hmm. That scene is so beautiful. Um, the the groom her husband comes to her and like grabs her out of the dirty water that she's trying to scrub herself and she's crying and she's mad and he just holds her and just speaks life over her that you're clean you're forgiven and she's trying to make everything right you know and cleanse herself and and that's that's a, a perfect picture of we can't do that we can't become, we can't out of work strive to be holy or better mm -hmm. or earn his love. He's already given it to us mm -hmm. and he's placed his holiness upon mm -hmm. us. It's just, and in us, it's just amazing. Yeah. Totally undeserved. Yes. You know, the thing is, is, is everything we experience in God, you know, what the holiness of God, the love of God, the purity of God, mm -hmm. the faithfulness, the constancy of God, the dedication of God, the fierceness of God, the passion of mm -hmm. God, none of it. We haven't earned any of it. Mm -hmm. We haven't earned any of it. Yeah. And what makes that so, it's even more beautiful then. Mm -hmm. Because I know it's not, it's not based on me. I didn't do anything to make it happen, which means... I can never make it stop. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. nothing we yeah. can do. And you can't run. You can't go away from his spirit. No matter where you go, his spirit is always with you. Mm -hmm. He will love us till eternity. He will never stop loving us. And you're never too far from him. Um, I, you know, I just had a flash from my past years back. I actually had a very similar experience as the gal in Redeeming Love. I found myself in a shower scrubbing myself, feeling dirty inside, thinking that as I washed myself, I was going to, it was going to take the feeling of filth and dirt, which really was my sin away. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't serving God at the time, but I, I just thought about that. And, um, you know, that, that lie sometimes too wants to come in the, the liar, the accuser and tell you that you're dirty and mm -hmm. tell you, you know, because you made a mistake or a bad choice that you're not good enough and you've gone too far this time. And, you know, mm -hmm. you just can't get back to God this time because you went too far, which is not true. Mm -hmm. You're never too far from God. You're never too dirty. Yes. Never That's too exactly dirty. Right. That's it. Because if, if we were, that would mean that the power of the blood would, was limited mm -hmm. and it's not limited. You know, we actually limit it. We say we put sin on a scale and we say some sins are worse than others. Mm -hmm. And, 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 you know, in our society, we, we judge different behaviors in different ways. And actually that's good. We don't want to punish everything the same. Yeah. At the same time, under the blood, mm -hmm. the power of the blood is, is limitless. Yeah. And I think about the holiness of God. You know, some of you might be listening to this right now and you're thinking, 
I want to be holy, mm -hmm. but I feel bound. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can't get free mm -hmm. from what uh, is controlling me. Maybe it's a behavior. You know, in my own life, it was pornography. So for 20 years of my life, I uh, periodically used pornography. And I would have periods of time where I did really well. <laughs> I did really well. <laughs> and then I would experience um, brokenness in relationship. And I would go back to pornography. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, it was a season of my life. I think it was probably 2019. Re God really began to whisper to me, what if you were free? Mm -hmm. What would it be like? And he began mm -hmm. to paint a picture that didn't exist. Mm -hmm. He really began to paint a picture to me like, but what if you were free? Now, and I want you to know that if you hear the whisper voice of God and he's like, daughter, son, I have, I have a secret to tell you. Yeah. I want you to stop and just let, and dream with God. Maybe there's things you've lost hope for, okay? Maybe you are totally bound by pornography or you're mm -hmm. totally bound by, you know, in my life it was p pornography, masturbation, self-loathing, mm -hmm. self-harm. Um, it was, I was terrible with finances, obsessive compulsive spending, but the real issue wasn't any of those exterior wounds. The real issue was that my heart was broken and I didn't know how deeply I was loved by a daddy. Yeah. Daddy God. So good. Which is why I call him Daddy God, because yes. he totally restored that for me. Yes. So in that season, he began to whisper to me, well, what would it be like if you were free? And I began to dream with God. Then he began to send me books. Like there was, there's a powerful book that I recommend to every single person. It's called Shifting Atmospheres by mm -hmm. Donna De Silva. It's a good book. Totally changed my life and helped me break covenants mm -hmm. that I had made with my enemies. Yeah. With the enemy of my soul. Yes. So that okay. really helped me. Yes. But then he said, if you really want to be free, daughter, why don't you just come be with me? Mm -hmm. And I would just spend time with Jesus. Yes. That simple. Yes. I know it sounds like, okay, whatever. No, no it's, same. Right? I can relate 100. I have had seasons of being in the, what I call the healing room and just mm. being with him, just soaking wow. with him, whether it was, mm. you know, it looks different all the time. Sometimes it was worships, a lot of journaling, a lot. Of, I have stacks of journals that have been mm. filled up and I've kept mm. because I hope and pray that they will, some of them might turn into books eventually mm. <laughs> when mm. I get to moving on that. Mm. Um, but yeah, just being with him in his mm -hmm. presence and listening to him, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes I would pray and declare and prophesy, mm -hmm. but sometimes I would just sit and listen mm -hmm. to his affirming voice. Yes. The voice of God is healing. Mm -hmm. It's so healing. It's the father's voice. So we were created to hear the father's voice. We need the father's voice. I mean, even in the natural, when you think, I want to go, you know, talk to my dad. I don't know if you've ever had times in the mm -hmm. natural. Growing up, I remember being in my 20s, I didn't live, I moved away. And I remember thinking, I need to call and just talk to my dad. I just need to hear my dad's voice. Mm -hmm. And just hearing his voice, it didn't matter what the topic was, mm -hmm. but I just needed to hear him, you know. And yeah. that, yeah, he did love me. And mm -hmm. I missed him. And just hearing his voice did something within me. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the same. Actually, it's greater with our Heavenly Father. That's everything. Because he's our creator. Mm -hmm. He's our creator. So he created us. He created us. And yeah. he created us to commune with him, mm -hmm. communicate with him, be one with him, live with him, abide in him. And that's where the, the intimacy and the power and the authority comes. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's the birthplace of your freedoms. You know, babies are created in the moment of intimacy. So babies are created in a, in a moment of great secret intimacy mm -hmm. between how God designed it between two people who are covenanted to one another and they're they're all by themselves they're in solitude together experiencing deep love and a baby is created something is received a seed is received and the egg and the seed come together and then I mean it takes some time <laughs> right the baby doesn't just like pop, pop out one day like oh there it is no actually the the mama like um mm. 
hovers mm -hmm. over the over the seed. Yeah. The mama is the holy like the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The so powerful. In Hebrew, in the first chapter of Genesis, where it says, and the Holy Spirit was over the face yes. of the deep. Yeah. That word is the same word used in Deuteronomy that says that the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. the Lord, is like an eagle, a mother eagle mm -hmm. who broods over her eggs. Mm -hmm. And this is what the Lord told me. He told me, you can have the seed, but if you don't have heat, mm. you have no baby birds. Mm. And you can have heat, but if you don't have the seed, you have no baby birds. <laughs> you hear what I'm saying here? So the Holy Spirit is the heat. The Holy Spirit comes with, yeah. with the fire yes. and begins to, to brood on yes. you. Yes. And it takes time yes. for the, the baby, the, yes. the, God, yes. the God nature, yes. the Christ nature inside yes. of you to be produced. Yes. It doesn't happen overnight. No. And that's my story. Mm -hmm. I would just go, like in the book of Hosea, mm -hmm. like we talked about last week, mm -hmm. the second chapter, I would go and he just wooed me yeah. into aloneness. Yeah. I'm wooing her into the wilderness. Yeah. I'm calling her. I'm alluring her. Yeah. I'm pulling her. I'm I'm bringing her into mm -hmm. the wilderness. Why? To be one with her. Yes. Why? <laughs> so that she will. So I can be her husband. Yeah. Her lover. So that we can be one, mm -hmm. and something glorious mm -hmm. called Christ mm -hmm. can be formed in her. Yes. That's where holiness is produced. Yes. It's not in the list of do's and don'ts. Yes. And we see it in the life of Jesus by the power of his, the Holy Spirit that he walked in. He was able to conform fully to the image of the, his father. He mm. walked in that and he was conformed, mm. being conformed. And so um, we yes. need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. Yes. Whole, in fact, Hebrews says that Jesus was perfected through the things that he suffered. Mm. So there, the, Jesus was in a process. He was always perfect without sin. Mm -hmm. He he never made any mistakes. He always obeyed his father, mm -hmm. but he did so through the process of submitting to the fire yes. of the Holy Spirit yes. in the same way that yes. we can. Yes. He actually demonstrates to us yes. what is possible for us. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Yes. It's and, amazing. Yes. And through it, he's refined and mm. made more like his father. Mm. We mm. all need refinement. Mm. We, all, we, we more, obviously, than Jesus. Yes. And you know what? Jesus, I would say, I would use the term like revealed the father. Mm -hmm. Over time, mm -hmm. as G throughout the course of his life, yeah. Jesus fully revealed the father. Yes. He was without sin. He was perfect. Yes. But he was a man mm -hmm. empowered by the Holy Spirit. Yes. And so over the course of his life, and in every moment, Moment, basically so the daddy God comes to us and he says in this moment I want you to reveal this about me mm -hmm. and we have a choice mm -hmm. Jesus did too and he always answered mm -hmm. with a yes <laughs> yeah that's right? true he yes. always said yes so he always perfectly revealed but it was a process of the unfolding mm -hmm. of the nature and character of God in his life yes. unto death and resurrection and the exact same process is yes. happening in us yes Amen. Well, let me just close with this. Um, Isaiah 35. Isaiah prophesied that there will be a highway of holiness called the sacred way. The impure will not be permitted on this road, but it will be accessible to God's people. And not even fools will lose their way. The lion will not be found there. No wild beasts will travel on it. They will not be found there, but the redeemed will find a pathway on it. You are invited. And maybe you're already there on that highway of holiness. Or maybe you've been bumped off and there is many ways that you can be bumped off or you, you exited that highway of holiness because of a compromise in your life or whatever that may be. I want to tell you right now that you can get back on that highway of holiness right now. All you have to do is enter in, repent, just repent. You know, I think about Peter and Acts that he just said, repent. What do we do? We repent. God, I exactly. sinned against you. You know, I, I opened up these back doors and I shouldn't have. I, I clicked on that uh, image or that I went to that website again. Lord, I repent and I need you. I need you, Holy Spirit. He's the helper. He's the ultimate helper. And he's always with us to empower us to conquer that sin. And as we repent, we turn away from it. 
we go a different direction. We get on that highway of holiness that we're created to run on and uh, be more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. Yes. Right now, we pray for you. And, and I see angels right now just coming to surround. Some of you are going to have angelic encounters. Yes, God. I feel the Lord is going to um, be giving some dreams and visions. He's going to begin to speak to some of you. And I just see, actually see like God pulling cotton out of some ears right now. He's just removing the cotton from your ears so that you can hear him. Mm -hmm. I hear the Lord Thank saying, Lord. I'm removing trauma. Come on. So that you can hear me. I'm a good daddy. Yes. I'm a good husband. Some of you, maybe you are hearing this and you're like, my husband, um, he, he beat me or mm -hmm. he cheated on me. Mm -hmm. And when I think about Jesus as a husband, it, it hurts my heart. Mm -hmm. I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to heal that wound, mm -hmm. daughter. Yeah. I'm going to restore that part of your yeah. heart. And you're going to learn that I'm the husband you need. Yeah. I'm the one you're hungering for. Yeah. So right now, we bless you in Jesus' mm -hmm. name. We thank you, God, that you yes. are producing supernatural holiness in your people. Yes. You're setting us apart for your yes. purposes. And you're raising us up like Zion on the hill yes. to be seen amongst the nations yes. as a display of your holiness. Yes. Audrey, shine, yes. beloved, shine. You were created to shine. And if there's any shame, anybody dealing with shame, I just want to come against that and break it off of you in Jesus' name and release freedom, freedom, freedom. Yes. And Jeremiah 29, 11, God has a beautiful plan, a good plan and a purpose for your life. Hold on to that plan. Um, get connected with uh, the church, the local church. I feel like there's some that maybe you're on here, but maybe you haven't been to church in a while. Get plugged back in. Get reconnected because you will be a better disciple of Jesus with other disciples around you. Amen. Amen. Audrey, I'm so glad you joined me today. Oh, thank you. Pleasure. Honor. We're, we're going to have to have her back. She's amazing. <laughs> Um, if you want to connect with us, you can always email us or you can message us on Facebook if you go to Harmony M. Klingenmeyer, author and speaker. We love you all. We release supernatural hope to you today. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to seeing you next week on the Life Network for Women. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.